God asked me if I wanted to give my life to him. And I said, yes. I didn't say, yes. I said, yes. You know, you know realize the difference? Yeah. And here I am. And he asked me the same thing of you, same thing of you. That doesn't mean you're going to be wearing yeah, one of these. You know that, right? Who can hear me? God. You better believe it. He hears us right now. Mm-hmm. I don't see him though. Yeah, you don't see him, but he's there. He invisible. My name is Brother Agustino. Brother Agustino. 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 There you go. The novice is a young man that has come to us and after spending six months living with the community has decided to uh, make a commitment to live as we do. He uh, receives the religious habit. Quite often they receive a new name and they live one year um, uh, here in Harlem under the direction of a, uh, of a um, novice master and they live a life of uh, prayer and uh, work and also of fraternity. So they are new and learning to live religious life. My whole life was devoted to skateboarding. Right? So I skateboarded for about 10 years and I had planned on being a professional skateboarder with my life. That's I gave up trying in school since it wasn't making me happy, right? Um, was in trouble a lot with the police, with my parents, uh, ran away from home several times. My mother was a very, very holy woman, very devoted, very loving woman, but she was really looking out for my greater good, but I thought she was, I thought she was, you know, she had lost it. I thought Jesus was only for old ladies who can't have fun in any other way than go to church, right? Which is, which is what I thought. So once she tried to get me to go to this youth conference, and I told her, no, I'm, I don't think I'd be interested in going, not at all. And I was not interested in any way, shape, or form. So she tried to get me to, well, she paid me $75, which is, which is a good amount of money for someone my age. So I went, and when I was there, I was, that's, that's where everything began. That's where, I, that's where God began to work, where I allowed him into my life. And I was able to find a meaning much more, much deeper, you know, what my heart was yearning for all my life. When I was very young in my conversion, I was thinking, I'm just going to give up everything and walk across the United States barefoot and just rely upon however God provides for me. Then I found out there was a man named St. Francis, and I, I read a biography on him, and I was like, wow, there's somebody else who really tried to live this life as well. So I did some more reading on St. Francis and looked, looked around for different Franciscan orders, and this is the one, after, after several years, this is the one that I joined. This is the one that I feel most called to, and after praying and visiting this community for four years, this is where I settled. When I first came to New York, I stopped by a Franciscan monastery, and there was this, this yearning to be a Franciscan in New York. And I had forgotten about that, and then it resurfaced in 1998. And so for a year, I prayed and discerned what God wanted me to do, what is it that he wanted. And I eventually called Father Glenn, who was the vocation director at the time. And very timidly, I was like, uh, Father, uh, can I, uh, I think God might be calling me to your, your order. And he said, sure, come over a visit. And everything was uh, set at ease. Well, the community of the Franciscans of the Renewal was begun approximately 13 years ago by eight uh, Capuchin friars. Uh, I was one of them. And each of us uh, had a desire to live in a more intense way, in a more, we might say, intentional way, the vows of uh, poverty, chastity, and obedience and um, in a way of, uh, of the St. Francis. And so 12 years ago, or rather once again, 13 years ago, with the permission of the Cardinal Archbishop of New York, we uh, came to Harlem and um, the South Bronx and other areas in order to work with the poor. And um, at that point, there was only eight of us, and uh, now there are approximately uh, 60 friars in the community.
Well, every summer um, in the South Bronx, we run a program for the, for the youth in the area who otherwise wouldn't have anything else to do. Um, and Tuesdays and Thursdays, we bring them for the day into, into our fryer, uh, Tuesdays in, into, the, uh, into our gym, and Thursdays, we take them out someplace. Uh, it's called Summer Life. Um, and on Thursdays, this past Thursday, we took them to a state park in New Jersey where we went swimming and canoeing. And the best experience about that entire thing is when there was a cow in the farm and all the kids from the city, they said, Whoa, look, what's that, a cow? It was very funny. But mostly, it's being with them and giving them the attention that they may not get and showing them the love that Jesus, that Christ showed us. Well, among ourselves that we say the Franciscan plant always does very, very well in very poor soil because once again, the origins of the Franciscan order is one in, in poverty. And uh, so uh, we come to and we live in areas noted for poverty uh, in the South Bronx, in New York, and also here in Harlem, uh, because we find that although many people would not like to live in a neighborhood as such, we find this neighborhood very, very rich, um, because the, the wealth of a country, of a nation, of a neighborhood, is really not in the buildings or in the possessions, but really in the people. We have it in our rule of life that if the neighborhood, for whatever reason, changes, meaning that if it becomes better, the friars, we will move out. And so hopefully we will always find that, that poor soil or that soil which is very, very rich for us uh, throughout our religious life. And one might be deceived to think that we are here to bring God to these people. But most of the time, these people bring God to us. They, they show us how to live a faithful life because they because they have nothing else but God sometimes. I wrote to a friend and I told them that everyone yearns for the divine. And God sometimes uses a Mexican in a monk suit to, to bring God to them, uh, which is okay by me, you know, no problem. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask you to bless all this food, bless, bless all those who clean up this park. We ask, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you poured out upon us, which we are about to receive from your goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Do I get an amen? Amen. Amen. There you go. All right. Peace. Peace, brothers. Peace. Ask me that, huh? Ask me what? He said, is you poor? Am I poor? Yeah. Why, do I look poor? Not no one with shoes on. Yeah. Well? He got sandals. I got sandals, but I'm not wearing them right now. Why? Because I just came out. Uh, oh. Usually, when I'm in the house, I just I just don't wear sandals. I just go barefoot. For what? Maybe glass on the floor. Yeah, you, you got to be careful, because I... You can be poor, but it's silly to be stupid. Um, you so don't have no money. I don't have any money. Well, I my question the, um, slippers. Well, I do. I do have some. I do have some sandals, but I take a vow of poverty. I promise to God that I won't. I won't have any possessions. That I won't own a house. That I won't own a car. That I won't own a bike. And because. When you think about it, Jesus, he didn't, he didn't have a house. He didn't have anything like that. Well, the, the three vows that a, a religious takes, a Catholic religious takes, is poverty, chastity, and obedience. These are the three vows that we make to God. And remember, ultimately, we cannot take Jesus out of the picture. The reason why we live these three vows is because these are the three ways, uh, the three vows in which our Lord has invited us to follow him has not invited everyone to follow him in this particular fashion, but invited us as Catholic religious.